This video is on solving logarithmic equations um, and uh, exponential um, modeling. So a few things to remember would be these properties of logs because they are quite important in finding or um, finding solutions to logarithmic equations. So <clears throat> if we have an exponential equation, as a reminder, We take log on both sides, depending on the base. So in the case of logarithmic equations, we exponentiate on both sides. Again, the base here is quite important. For example, here, the base is 2. So we have to exponentiate, in other words, raise it to the power of 2 on both sides. the log and the 2 would disappear or become 1 and we'd simply have x minus 4 equals 8. Now I'm um, saying that the log and the 2 would disappear. Um, it's an easy way to think of um, the approach but that is not the actual mathematical phrasing of it. Um, so I'm doing that so that we can understand this easily. So add 4 on both sides, 8 plus 4 would equal 12. So a key thing to note is that before we exponentiate, we shouldn't have any constants in front of the natural logarithm, now, or logarithm in general. Um, if we look at any of these properties here, um, we shouldn't or we don't have a number in front of the log for the properties to work. Um, for example, if I have to convert a sum of logs to a log of a product, I shouldn't have a number before log um, in both terms. So same rule applies here. Um, I have a 4 in the front, so the first task would be to divide out the 4 on both sides. So ln of 3x would simply equal to 2. Now, natural logarithm is base e, so we exponentiate using base e. Those two would go away. And we will have 3x is equal to e squared, which would mean x is equal to e squared divided by 3. We could find that value using the calculator, e squared divided by 3. And that happens to be approximately 2.463. <coughs> to solve this equation, we have two logs, no num numbers in the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine the two logs using... Um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, product rule. So we have x times x minus 3 equals 1. Now we could raise it to the power of 10 because log simply means log base 10. So exponentiate using base 10. The log and 10 would go away. We have x times x minus 3 equal to 10, which would imply x squared minus 3x equals 10, which would imply x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. Now, this is a quadratic equation. So if we have a quadratic equation, 
we should either use factoring or we should use the quadratic formula to find the solution. Um, we can't factor this particular equation, so we can find the solution using the quadratic formula. So minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So we have 3 plus or minus square root of 9 plus 40 divided by 2. 3 plus or minus square root of 49 divided by 2. I'll carry it over here. So we will have 3 plus 7 over 2 and 3 minus 7 over 2. And that would give us um, 5. 10 over 2 is 5. And negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Oh, in retrospect, this we could have done this using factoring. I'm sorry. Um, that was easy. It just didn't cross my mind. Um, we could have simply used factoring. So the solutions are x is equal to 5 and minus 2. In the second problem, we have to combine the logs first. So <clears throat> let's move all the logarithms to one side. ln of x minus 3 minus ln of 7x minus 23 plus ln of x plus 1 equals 0. Um, it's good if we moved one of the logarithms back to the other side because we can only combine two natural logarithms or logarithms at a time. Now, would it be wrong to have all three logarithms on one side and um, go about it? No, not necessarily, but things would be easier if we took the other approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep ln of x minus 3 and ln of x plus 1 on the left-hand side and move ln of 7x minus 23 to the right hand side. Now, when we combine these two, we have ln of x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals ln of 7x minus 23. Um, exponentiate on both sides with respect to base e. which would give us x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals 7x minus 23. So x squared minus 3x plus x minus 3 would equal to 7x minus 23. So x squared minus 2x minus 3 plus 23 minus 7x would equal 0. So I simply moved the terms to the other side. So I would have x squared minus 9x plus 21 equals 0. And that is an equation we can factor. We don't need a quadratic formula here. Um, this time I'm quite sure. Um, so we could factor it as I'll just use the quadratic formula. It's easier that way, I guess. So minus minus 9 plus or minus square root of minus 9 squared minus 4 times a times c 
divide by 2 times 1, which would give us 9 plus or minus square root of 81 minus <coughs> 84 divided by 2. So we have 9 plus or minus square root of negative 3 over 2. So we definitely needed the quadratic formula in this case. So 9 plus or minus i square root of 3 over 2. <coughs> So those are the two um, solutions. Um, in these cases, to avoid confusion, it's better to simply go with the quadratic formula, as you might have noticed that I overlooked twice. Um, I used quadratic formula when it wasn't needed, and when it was needed, I thought uh, I could have done it using factoring, but I quickly changed my mind. So it is better to simply stick with quadratic formula unless you can recognize things right away. Um, here is the first equation. Um, 7 raised x minus 2 over 6 equals 7 raised 1 over 2. This is an exponential equation, so we have to take log on both sides. Specifically, we have to do log base 7 on both sides. So log base 7, 7 raised x minus 2 over 6 equals log base 7, 7 raised 1 over 2. Those two and those two would go away. We would simply have x minus 2 over 6 equals 1 half, which would imply x minus 2 equals 6 over 2. x minus 2 would equal 3, which implies x is equal five <clears throat> the second example is a logarithmic equation so first I'm going to combine those two I would have x minus 4 times x plus 1 equals natural logarithm of x minus 8 natural logarithm is base e so I'm going to raise it to the power of, uh, uh, excuse me, e. The exponential, the natural logarithm, would go away. And we would have x minus 4 times x plus 1 equals x minus 8. Foil, we would have x squared minus 4x plus x minus 4 equals x minus 8. x squared minus 3x minus 4 minus x plus 8 would equal 0. x squared minus 4x plus 4 would equal 0. This definitely can be factored as x minus 2 times x minus 2 third charm I suppose. So the solution is 2 comma 2. Moving on we have the exponential growth and decay model and a model of the form a equals a naught e raised kt um, when k is greater than zero, is called a growth model. The same model, if we change the value of k from a positive number to a negative number, it becomes a decay model. So positive k implies growth. Negative k implies decay. So A is the final value, A0 is the initial value, K is the rate of growth or decay, and T is the time. So here is an example 
Um, most of these growth and decay problems are word problems, so we have to translate the problem to an equation. So in the year 2004, we invested money in a savings account. The value of the investment after the 2004 is modelled using that equation. When will your account be worth $9,465? So that is the final value. And we have the initial value to be 7600. K is equal to 0 0.068. Clearly, it is positive. So the model is growth. Your investment is growing in the account. Hence, we went from 7 to 600 to 9,465. So how do we solve? We have A to be equal to 7 to 600. E raised negative, oops, 0 0.068 T. So the final value is 9,465 would equal to 7 to 600 E raised 0 0.068 T. So first step would be to divide 9,465 by 7 to 600. We get 1.245. That would be equal to e raised 0 0.068t. So this is an exponential equation. So we take natural logarithm on both sides because the base is e. That would correspond to natural logarithms. So we have ln of 1.245 equals ln e raised 0.068t. These two sort of go away, so we have ln of 1.245 equals 0.068t. So all we have to do now is divide ln of 1.245 by 0 0.068. We have t is equal to 3.22. Um, <clears throat> so, typically, um, the, the most accurate answer here is we start at 2004, which is the year 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would be 2005, 2006, 2007. 2008. So the time here is somewhere between, or clearly between 2007 and 2008, closer to 2007. So if we want to know the approximate answer, some people would like to round up, some people would like to round it to the nearest integer. I'm going to round it to the nearest integer and say in the year 2007, which is right there. Here is another example. In 2000, the population of Africa was 807 million, and by 2011, it had grown to 10 or 1,052 million. When will the population be 2,000 million? So, notice the rate is not given. So the objective here is to first find the rate um, at which the population grew from the year 2000 to 2011. So let us start with the model A equals A0, E raised KT. In 2000, we had our initial value, 
which was 807. Since every single unit is the same, we do not have to put the million part here. It is not necessary. So million there, million, million. So they all have the same measure of unit. So we will just keep it as 807 because things are just going to get cancelled out. So, so that happened when t is equal to zero. In other words, that is our initial value. In 2011, the value a at 11 became 1052. That is when t is equal to 11. So when I plug in 11 in the equation, I would have a of 11, which is that number right there, would equal to the initial value 807 times e raised k times 11. We know what a was. A is the population. When t was 11, that was 1052. So 1052 would equal 807 e raised 11k. So 1.303, approximately 1.304, would equal e raised 11k. That is an exponential equation, so we have to take log on both sides, specifically natural logarithm, because the base here is e. So ln of 1.304, would equal to ln e raise 11k. Those two would sort of go away, and we would have 11k equals ln of 1.304, which would mean k is simply ln of 1.304 divided by 11. Oops. So the rate is 0 0.024, which would mean the model that represents the population is A equals the initial value 807 e raised 0 0.024 t. So the question wants us to find um, the time when the population would be 2,000 million. So now we're going to set A equals 2,000. And we're going to solve for T. We wouldn't be able to do this unless we had uh, the value of K, or we have the value of K. So now that we have K, we can proceed. So 2,000 would equal to 807 e raised 0.024t. So I'm dividing 2000 by 807 to get 2.48 approximately. And now I have an exponential equation so I'm going to take natural logarithm on both sides. The ln and the e would go away. So t is ln of 2.48 divided by 0 0.024. 
That gives us 37.84. If we round it, we have 38. So the initial time was the year 2000. So we can expect in the year or 38 years later, um, the growth to hit 2000 million. Therefore, the year would be 2038, approximately. <clears throat> so, here is a problem on the half-life period. So, keep in mind, half-life would simply mean So if things have to reduce in amount, naturally it has to be a decay model. On the other hand, <coughs> the doubling time is when the initial amount is doubled in an exponential growth model. For things to double, the, there has to be growth. So in this case, we have a half-life. So that half-life is given by 22 years. With an exponential model, regardless of decay or growth, T half is the half-life. It is given by ln of 2 divided by k. And that is also equal to T sub 2, which is the doubling time. So in other words, the formula is the same. So... In the problem, half-life is 22, and we want to know the time when it would take um, for the substance to reduce to 80% of its original amount. Again, we do not know the rate, so the rate is missing, so we have to find the decay rate first. So k would simply be equal to ln of 2 divided by 22. So the rate is 0 0.0315. But one must be very careful here because when we write the model, we can't simply write it as e raised kt because that would imply a growth model, but clearly things are decaying, so it has to be a negative. There has to be a negative there. So we want to know when the final amount is 80% of the original amount in a decay. So the final amount has to be 80% of the original amount. So A0, that would equal to A0 E raised minus KT. Because the initial amount is not given either, so I'm just going to treat it as A0. So those two would go away. So 0.8 would equal e raised negative 0.0315t. That is an exponential equation. So I'm going to take natural logarithm on both sides. That 
those two would go away. And I'd simply have ln of 0.8 equals um, negative 0.0315t. And I use the calculator. And t is 7.084, which is approximately 7.1 years. So example four, we have a model, which is that, and the model has an initial value A0, and the rate is negative 0. Point, um, or 0. 0.000121, um, but there is a negative which indicates decay. So skeletons were found at a construction site in San Francisco in 1989. The skeletons contained 88% of the expected amount of carbon-14 found in a living person. In 1989, how old were the skeletons? So we sort of have to go backwards. Um, so there was an original amount, which is a naught. That a naught became point eighty-eight percent of a naught. In other words, the final value a is 88% of A0, and that would equal to A0 times E raised 0.000121t. Those two would go away, so 0.88 would equal to E raised negative 0.00121t. That is an exponential equation, so we take natural logarithm on both sides. Again, it is because of the fact we have e. If that were to be 10, then we would take log, regular log. So ln of 0.88 would equal to ln e raised negative 0.000121t. Those two would sort of go away. So we just use the calculator, ln of 0.88 divided by negative 0.000121. And that would give us a time of 1056.47 approximately. 1056.5. So this was in the year 1989. So we want to know how old were the skeletons in 1989. In 1989, the skeletons were 1056.5 years old.